Hello everybody, here is our how to make video journal on the birthday party and present room for birthday bowl ever after high dolls. Of course this can be used for any doll really. So here is um, the supplies I started with. That was a little set I got from eBay for $9.99. Really low quality so keep that in mind. Um, this poofy thing came from the dollar store. It was a little princess wand. I got it quite some time back. So I'm not sure that they would have those of any time recently. Um, had fun with the colors with this one for sure. That is Ashlyn Ella's Shoe Shop playset accessories um, that we used the accessories, I mean, for her room. And then we got the other stuff left over, which Grace didn't want anymore. So starting off with our box, a very large box, doing a lot of stuff we've done in lots of the other tutorials. Here is my ceiling. I've been really on the lookout for scrapbook paper that actually matches and gives me the full size, so that's been well. Like on all the rest, I just use my tacky glue to put it in place, hiding my dimples, the glue dimples, as much as I can. Then we have the same, a matching paper for the floor. I really like this one. I use a little bit of clear tape on the back, just a little bit to hold it in place until I glue it. Not too much because the glue, of course, doesn't stick well to the tape. So I'm just going to put those in my floor and ceiling. And then what I'm going to do is um, make sure they match, I guess. I don't know. I'm not sure what I was doing next. Oh, of course, I'm going to cut this off the edging so because it's a little bit too big um, I, you can use a knife like this utility knife or scissors or I have my guillotine cutter which came in really handy for this um, particular project um, you'll come to see that in the future it was my for my scrapbooking and whoa what a joy it has been for this so here's my paper for the wall which I decided to match up exactly on the repeat it's just like doing wall part paper you got a repeat and it's a few inches oh yeah don't forget as with the others, I'm going to make sure I got spots planned out to put my glue and hide those dimples as I'm always trying to do. That is where the balance would go. This is upside down at this point, so um, that should work. When I put this together, I put a little piece of tape on the back to hold it in place while I was getting it ready and just making sure it was all matching. Then I took some school glue, the stick glue, and I glued that part down so that nothing would show on the part that will be showing, if that makes sense. So I've lost a few inches by doing this, but eh, I thought, well, it's one room where I really get to do this, so I will. So I've got enough. I've done my measurements to know how much I need, but I guessed at needing, what was it, four pieces? Yeah, I guessed it needing four pieces. But since I decided to do this, well, I kind of um, come swinging around here. It's looking good. It's taped up, ready to glue, and I ran out. Oops, I don't think I was showing that right here. I was showing that I've made measurements for how high the paneling is going to be, those squares that I'm making. So yeah, right there. So I'm showing that I have some room that they're going to overlap and therefore I can put glue there and then when I add the trim I can hide more glue dimples on the end. Here is my panel which I quickly took away. Why did I do that? Okay yeah see I want to show you that these are these crack me up because I don't remember what I was filming for. Here it is I came around and I'm short and I don't have any more of this paper around. I will have to make a trip to the store to get one piece of paper. It worked out really good though because I was at the big mall center area so I got lots of Christmas shopping done <laughs> but in the meantime I have decided to um, go ahead with what I can that was my guillotine cutter I was talking about that's awesome for scrapbooking and cutting paper huge joy to have it around the house and use it for this too here was the size measurements and way I cut from a 12 by 12 piece of scrap board this is cardstock so it is stiffer I had it around so there's no cost that's wonderful and um, I'm making the panels to kind of look like pa wainscoting panels I think they're called um, with some glitter of course because it's ever after high so we can have a little bit more fun here's just the gist of how they're going to go up and of course you've already seen the tour I think so you would know kind of where this is going I'll put a piece of ribbon to cover my little gap that gives me a little bit room in case I'm not perfect too 
Um, and then here is the other colors I'm going to use because I thought one color would be a little boring. And I really wanted to play off the colors that were in the plaid and the different colors of their hair. And I thought that was just perfect. Putting the panels up, I just used um, the sticky glue. What do you think? I think it's looking way better with the variegation in the colors of the panels. So when I put the glue on, I only put it on the very edge of the whole panel. In the middle would have made dimples and it would not have looked good. When I get over to the right and the left, then I'll just cut that down and make the panel a little shorter where it's on the edge, but still have my symmetry going through the rest of it so it works and seems realistic, I guess. Here's the room at this point and I'm really loving these colors. I got so distracted once I decided I wanted to do this. So um, here we are, what am I doing here? So now we're getting into the corner. Sometimes the corners of the boxes are not very even, as in all my wallpapering days in the past. Same thing, this is kind of what you gotta do. If you just match it up like that, take a little pencil line and kind of freely trace close where you think um, you need to cut off and um, do this in portions not all at once and then I'll slightly just cut a little sliver off and a little and I'll keep matching it up cut a little sliver off matching it up cut a little sliver off and that's where I'll get it to match in there really good and look nice if you had a thick trim that was going there it, you could really not really worry about it but mine was pretty thin so I decided to go the extra mile and make that corner look really good plus I'm a old wallpaper and decor girl so I, I just can't not do it as best I can at this point I'm starting to use the trim and get in between my panels pretty straightforward I used hot glue slowly I found starting at the floor first I'm showing that the wrong way, but I started at the floor by gluing and then worked my way up and snipped it off. Mem remembering I have a little bit of room there and want to make sure that that trim will cover it. At this point I'm fiddling and deciding what I want to do with the trims, I'm not quite sure. In the meantime I am going to mod podge the floors and ceilings. And at this point what I really need to do is go to the store. Hooray! I went to the store. One piece of paper turned into a trip that took six hours. So I have my paper and I can continue on. And while I was there, I decided I needed a little bit of break to the floor from the white. And um, I picked up that trim too to use as the baseboard. I'm really liking that a lot. So yeah, thumbs up. I guess I'm happy. <laughs> At this point, now that I have my paper, I am catching up on the side that was not done. I really was fiddling with my trims a lot, not knowing what I wanted to do. I started to figure out what I really wanted. Was it to be thick? And this idea wasn't planned and became a plan later as I was moving along and doing it. That I decided to layer it and make it um, just look more like icing. I'm super glad I got the green for the bottom. That's a nice break in all the white. So it just wouldn't look so squared off. I've already done my duct tape around the edges. If you if this is your first time watching, we've done that for all these box rooms. So you can check that out on any other video. Just gives me a nice edge. So I'm going to begin to put those trims on that I've just showed you being uh, lots of layers to the middle row exactly. So here's that middle row. Um, the bottom one was easy, that's one. This one, I've used two. At that point, the top one, I've used just one. And then, see it? Yeah, so there's two layers. And now I'm gonna put the third layer on there. That finally made me satisfied, like, okay, this is the look I wanted. It's a birthday party, it's birthday ball dolls. Now it's looking a little bit like a birthday cake. I guess that's what I was going with. And um, now we have some puffy paint for any imperfections between the baseboard and the floor. That just kind of smooths it out really nice. Now this box, for whatever reason, just wasn't a really well done box and I had huge gaps up there. I was going to cover it with trim and then I remembered. I have this leftover from Gingerbread's Room and Crystal Winters. And I happen to have had another thing of caulk and white left over as well because I only used one for crystals. <laughs> Still mess up her name. So I want to take this opportunity that what I learned along the way was, well, I will, yes, I will cut it off the top there first and stuff it in there and use it just like cake icing. And uh, what I learned was the caulk is much better if you want the effect like cake. 
this is what I usually use for gluing stuff and sticking things is Loctite. Loctite is much more watery. I ended up using the DAP for Crystal Snows and it looked like icing and I used this Loctite which was much more watery which I used on gingerbreads. Now that I know I would have flipped those around for that and the looks weren't quite what I want. I hope that makes sense. So now I have, um, what am I doing? I put some of the puffy paint on the bottom which is the floor and now I'm going to start doing the ceiling trim. This is one whole tube of caulk in there. That's about how much you get. get. When I had my very first job it was in a coffee shop, Tim Hortons in Canada and at that time they used to make cakes. So believe it or not I have a little bit of experience from my teenage job on how to decorate cakes. And um, this looks really bad here because I'm doing it with one hand but you can see how much how firm that is that it's much better to work with. And so I will take that process and just make those along the top. Here they are, done, 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 all around the top. Now I did those really, really thick. So that did end up pretty much mostly using my, um, my um, caulking, but I have some left. So I take a wet paper towel, put it around the end, and then put it in my fridge until I was ready to use it again. Here's that wand. You can see it was a little fairy wand and all I did was yanked it off the top so I can get rid of the wand and just use the puff from the ribbons. This is something if you didn't buy you can make very easily use this as an idea for it. I just happened to have it around for something else. Didn't use it. So hey this worked out well for a ceiling decoration. I will hot glue this right onto where it is and then everywhere it touches I'll put a little, little dab of hot glue to hold it and then I'm going to do some little stars with the caulking to hold it on make it look complete. At this point I've flipped it around and I'm working on it. When I was putting them up I was snipping a little bit because I wanted to use a ruler here and um, make sure that the doll's heads were not going to hit the streamers. So I didn't do this all very perfectly but kind of made it look like it you know, was casual, like I tried to get it right. Here's where I put just a little bit of hot glue to hold it in place, and then the little frosting star will come later. But I, I thought that was important. That would really stink if the streamers were hitting their heads. And um, I love this, it's so cute. When it's all said and done, then I will, I only put the glue in the middle middle and here, then I'll add a little hot glue and puff it a little bit where I think it needs just a little bit more. So now I've flipped it back onto the ceiling. Once I got that all done and um, I can start to put my little frosting stars on. Um, I'm not sure if I mentioned when you do use a piping bag, make sure you twist it so there's no air bubbles in it. That's a very handy tip so then it won't spit at you. And um, I'm going to do one little frosting star in the smaller ribbons and then I'm going to do two on the thicker ribbons. I don't think I do the two here because I wanted to do that with two hands. Now something funny, I guess I just, well I know, I just kept filming these one-handed. I didn't like the little points that were coming out there so I wasn't sure about this anyway. I made a mad dash afterwards to find something to stick into them and what they were was um, the doorknobs from the rooms I had bought too big, too small. So I had run around what do I have what do I have what do I have and I stuck him in those points before it dried so that it would look okay I'll show that right here so I didn't film any of that because it was a total mad dash to get him in there before <laughs> it dried if that makes any kind of sense and I did use that entire oh there's the beads right there the glass beads I had left over well that's the door size the right ones I had some smaller ones so I just Push those in ever so gently, got rid of the point, made them look a little more fancy and gives us a little glitter glitter glint. So while that's all drying, which that's going to take a few days, I'm going to prime my stands and then put one coat of paint on them for a base color and then just kind of I worked with those with a couple of colors with dry brushing so it could blend in to the bottom floor just a little bit better than being so bold green and standing out. I have loved that detail on all those rooms. So what am I doing next? Oh, looks like I gotta make some curtains while this is drying too. This fabric, I almost jumped up and down the store because I thought, oh, this is so perfect, so colorful. It, these rooms are so fun for being able to pick things like that. 
And when all the curtain's done, then I can put up this pretty little sign, which is like perfect dollhouse size. I love when you find things like that. And that has almost every color in it and then some. It's like the highlight of this room and adding just more color. Y'all know I love colorfulness. So this room, besides its curtains, is pretty much complete. It was a lot of little things to do, but really not that complicated. Now I have this set which I put together. It is wobbly, so I ended up putting the Deloctite clear under just a few little dabs to hold it in place. These chairs were just slop. <laughs> you can see how they bent in. I ended up putting those, to take them apart, put them together with caulk. I put a block in between it, a little piece of wood with the legs spread out and then let it dry overnight helped a lot had this fun wrapping paper so i had some boxes around and what i didn't have enough of in size i um, just made them out of a few pieces of cardboard glued together and i just wrapped them as you do a present it was kind of weird with the little tape but it did work out so that's just going to take a bunch of presents to bring that up and make it look good i haven't done the curtains yet i got sidetracked of course, you know that's in step three, how to make the curtains simple, simple. And so concludes this video journal of our birthday party and present room. Hope you've enjoyed it and did enjoy the tour. Look very forward to seeing you on whatever the next surprise room may be. Have a great night. See you next time.